In this video, we'll explore using multiple displays with zoom and dabble with the dual monitor option as well. Now we'll be using the display settings from our previous video. Here the laptop is number one. It's then extended to the monitor, which is number two. And the monitor is duplicated to the TV or projector, which is number three. In these scenarios, the laptop will only be for the teacher's perspective and then the monitor will be what's shown to the students in the room. And we'll look at how you choose that screen to share to Zoom. So again, the laptop is only for the teacher's perspective and it's kind of where you can have things on deck to share with your students. Now the goal for the end of this video is that you'll be able to navigate three different scenarios within Zoom. So here's a quick overview of those three scenarios and then we'll start at the beginning and work our way up. In this first scenario, this is how students in the room can see the students in Zoom, but you can be running the chat on your laptop so only you can see it. In the second option, we'll look at how you can share something with all of your students at the same time while you can see it and also being able to see your entire Zoom and run the chat. And in our final option, we'll look at how you can screen share with all of your students while allowing the students in the room to see the students in Zoom and you can still run and manage all of the controls in Zoom on your laptop. Now, as promised, we're gonna start small and build, and we're gonna begin with option one, where you can control the chat and the participants on your laptop, but still see the kids in Zoom, as well as share that with the kids in the room. Now, so far, all I've done is open up Zoom and joined with a few other devices. And in this first scenario, we're not even going to use dual monitors. We're gonna use a little pop-out hack. So what I mean by that is you're probably used to clicking on the chat. And if you click on this little arrow, you can do a pop-out. Now I can move my chat around on the screen and it's separate from my main Zoom. If I ever want to reattach, all I need to do is click the three dots and merge to meeting window. So we're gonna pop this one out. And now let's click on participants. And again, we'll click the pop out. And now these are separated. Now I'm gonna leave these two screens on my laptop so that I can mute people if I need to. I can see who's raising their virtual hand. And I can also see the chat, but it's not being shared with everybody in my classroom. Now all I need to do is go to my main Zoom window, click that middle icon to resize. And that just makes it easy. Now I can grab the very top portion and drag it up. So I'm dragging it up to my monitor. So now it's off of my laptop. And that gallery view is now being seen by everybody in my class on my TV or projector. I can also see them because they're on the monitor in front of me. But then the participant window and the chat window are only visible on the teacher's laptop. One final tip before going to option two is another difference with pinning and spotlighting. So these are only my kids at home. My kids in my classroom do not need to join Zoom. Student number one, I'm gonna click the three dots and pin them. So now they're nice and big on my screen. My screen is also being shared to the TV, so it's nice and big for the students in my room, but pinning does not change the perspective for kids that are joining via Zoom. Pinning is just your view. If you wanna change the view for everybody, including the kids in Zoom, that's when you would spotlight. So I'm gonna remove a pin and you're only gonna get the spotlight feature for somebody that has their video turned on. So I just propped a book up here. I click the three dots and spotlight for everyone. Now this is the main screen on kids in the room and for kids at home. And they're going to lose the ability to pin anything else. So it really does help keep their focus on the item that you'd like them to see. So summing up option one, the teacher's running the chat in the participant window on the laptop. The teacher and the kids in the room can see the grid view of Zoom. And you're not sharing a screen, so it's also really easy for those kids in Zoom at home to see the gallery view as well. Now in option two, what I'm gonna be doing is viewing all of my students that are in Zoom on my laptop, but simultaneously I'm sharing something with my students in the room and my students in Zoom. So to get started, I've opened up Zoom and my students are here. Now I'm going to share screen 
And this is my laptop. So my laptop is screen two, and there's a number two showing up so I can help correlate. And screen one is my monitor. So I'm gonna be sharing screen one and go ahead and share. And the nice thing about that is you get to preview anything before sharing it. So your laptop is kind of like being on deck. So on my laptop, I'm opening up Chrome and I already have a picture here of Mount St. Helens that I wanted to share. So I'm in Google Earth, I can get the perspective just right. And when I'm ready, I'm just going to drag it up to my monitor. So now I know you can't see it, but it's on my monitor and anything that's on my monitor is also on my TV. And I've shared it for Zoom so that anything on my monitor is being viewed at home. And that's the best way for you to see students and manage your participants and your chat while allowing students to see a screen that you're sharing. Now we're gonna look at the perspective from a student on a district Chromebook. Before you share your screen, they're able to toggle between the gallery view and the speaker view. Once you share your screen, students are able to exit full screen view and they'll see all of the videos along the top or they can make full screen and then you'll see the floating option they have to expand seeing other people in Zoom. So a quick recap, you're able to run Zoom from your laptop. You're sharing anything that's on your monitor because you shared your entire monitor. If you change what you bring up there, that's now shared at home and in your classroom. Now in this final setup, we're going to be sharing a screen with kids in Zoom, but the kids in our room will see the screen we're sharing in addition to the faces of those students that are at home. And then on our laptop, we'll be able to still manage the chat and the participant window. So now let's turn on dual monitors. To do that, just click the carrot next to your microphone and go to audio settings. And this gets you truly to all of your settings. So we're gonna go to general and that third one down says use dual monitors. And if you click on the question mark, it gives you a little bit more information. Show participants videos and screen shared content on separate screens. So you'll have two screens of Zoom and you can choose which one is on your laptop and which one you're displaying for your classroom and possibly students at home. So we'll go ahead and say use dual monitors. This would also be a great time to pause the video and go explore some of the different settings that are in Zoom. There might be some new ones from when we started. That'd be some that you'd like to make some changes to now that you have more experience with Zoom. One would be if you go to screen share, you can choose side by side so participants can see you along with the screen that you're sharing. One other setting I would look at before closing would be going to video and unclicking mirror my video. That way, if you share text, it's not going to be backwards when you're looking at your screen. Once you close out of settings, you might need to end your meeting and restart it. That seems to be the best way to make sure all of your new settings have taken. So we're going to level it up just a little bit for this third option. So I've reopened Zoom and I know I'm in dual monitor settings because if I go down to the Zoom app, I see my Zoom meeting and a second Zoom window. So I'm going to click on my meeting first and click on that center icon to resize so it's not taking up all of my screen. And I'm going to get my laptop ready because this is on deck. I'm getting things ready for what I want to share with all my kiddos. Now I have this great image of Mount Rainier and Google Earth. And not only can you drag it around and zoom in, if you click on the scrolling wheel, click it, you can tilt it, you can rotate it. It's really cool. So that's what I want to share with kids in Zoom. So I'm going to start there and I'm going to say share my screen. And this time I'm not sharing screen one or two. I'm only choosing this one tab in Chrome and I'm going to say share. This green image is around my Mount Rainier because that's currently being shared in Zoom. So that's all that I'm sharing in Zoom, but both of these are going to be on my monitor to share with the kids in my room. So I'm gonna just drag this up and I know you can't see it when it's on my monitor, but trust me, it's on my monitor and now it's also in the TV in my classroom. And I want the kids in my class to also see the kids in Zoom. So I'm gonna just drag this straight up to my monitor. It's now on my TV and you can change how much space each one takes up. And the nice thing about this is now I can click on participants and chat. 
so I can still run the chat and the participant window from my laptop, but on my TV, I have displayed all my kiddos and I have Mount Rainier. And then the one thing that I'm sharing in Zoom with all my kiddos is Mount Rainier because they can already see those, uh, those scrolling faces across the top of their window. Now that might feel like a lot, but it does give you three different options of how to share information simultaneously with your roomers and your Zoomers. Now you can always go back and watch the video, pause it where needed, but it's also best to start with what is it that you want students to see and experience. Start there and the technology can follow.